question. If, if a highly sensitive person had father wounds, mm -hmm. okay, what, what challenges would they be exhibiting? What is the specific pro problems they'd be having? And what would it look like if they didn't have that wound anymore? Like what I result think the would they damage get? Uh, that, that you're talking about, you know, one way, to, one view of that uh, would be uh, the, um, the loss of connection with self. Mm. Um, the, 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 the difficulty in, in maintaining uh, kind of a friendly, uh, productive, um, non-critical relationship with uh with yourself mm. uh, particularly around the areas where you're most vulnerable which is your sensitivity the fact that you feel things deeply the fact that you know you process things more deeply um and uh and and so again kind of framing that in the uh the context of being a man in western culture and maybe every culture i don't know um that there's just there aren't a lot of outlets uh for yeah. that there's not a lot of support for that um, there's not really much of a framework uh, for for highly sensitive men to kind of be who they are and function and feel like they're part of the uh, you know part of the manhood collective um, and and then when you if you uh, if you add some uh, a significant childhood wounding like uh, like a, a poor relationship with a father in my case my sensitivity was one of the primary reasons why my father rejected me and mm -hmm. I also gave him a massive entry point to hurt me yeah. uh, so you know those two things alone they so that's going to cascade into other problems for for men as adults um, they're going to feel uh, like they're not proper men that their masculinity is not correct um, and so they may try to overcompensate in some of the ways that I did. Uh, if so I had to be the craziest, most, you know, risk taking party guy around. Right. Uh, so I figured that was a way to, so I'll show everybody. Uh, yeah. After I got out of high school, I didn't go to college. I went and worked in a sawmill for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I had to prove to all the men in my family, oh, man, I can do this stuff. I can do dangerous work. I can do a shitty job, you yeah. know? Um, and that derailed me from a lot of, opportunities that were and then I had to turn around and pay for college myself because you know everybody wanted to offer me scholarships and it's like no I'm gonna go out and you know do mm. some stuff so I'm gonna make this harder on myself because I have to prove something. Exactly. And and you know what Sean in the end all those men I was trying to prove myself to they didn't even notice. Yeah exactly. It didn't change you know yeah I don't and that's I guess that's part of what if I was working with somebody I would I would also emphasize that it's not necessarily a bad thing that I did that. Um, right. Yeah, I gained a lot from that. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of highly sensitive men uh, are, you know, they're kind of averse to sports, mm -hmm. uh, and I was too. I was always a real clumsy kid. Um, it, you know, people would, somebody would, you know, we'd be in gym class or even as an adult in a yoga class, the instructor would say, "Okay, Bert, here's how you do this," and they demonstrate it in a real so do it. I'd be, I'm just there dumbfounded. Yeah, uh, I understand what they're doing. Um, so athletics was real difficult for me. I but did it because I wanted to, to be accepted. Right. Otherwise, I didn't want to be an outcast, um, but I gained a lot from doing it because I challenged myself. And that's one of the things that some of the writers that I just want to say is like, it's good for you to challenge yourself in areas where you don't feel competent. Mm -hmm. it's so important for you to feel competent. Yeah. Uh, and it's good for you to stretch out into areas where you don't because that, that way you grow, you build your confidence, you build connections with people in different kinds of ways that you might not. Uh, so just to kind of circle back around, um, I think that, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, if you take a, you know, take an example, man, uh, who's highly sensitive, who grew up in a family where there was abuse and neglect and trauma and, or had a father who was distant or demeaning, uh, or abusive or absent. Um, it, it, um, he doesn't have any model for the kind of man that he's going to be. Um, and he carries uh, extra deeper damage um, because he, as a child, he's going to take in more. He's going to question more. Um, and and if he's like a lot of like every child basically until they grow out of it, thinks they're responsible for everything that happens around them, mm -hmm. and what happens mm -hmm. to them. Um, and highly sensitive people tend 
to be very conscientious and very, very responsible. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a, it's like a, it's this horrible kind of boomerang effect of like, you know, I didn't get what I needed. Um, and so therefore I'm inadequate because it was my responsibility to get what I needed somehow. You know? Yeah. Do you, do you feel like um, these men would ident self identify as highly sensitive men? Most of them probably not. That's How do you think they might identify themselves? Um, well, some would, uh, you know, if you're dealing with someone who's an artist, um, if you're dealing with someone who's a musician, uh -huh. uh, maybe somebody who does something like uh, architecture, uh, maybe somebody like you, you know, uh, who huh. kind of arenas, someone who works in, in healing arts, although probably not Western medicine, because that's so just so industrial and so cutthroat uh, that it kind of forces the sensitivity out of people and kind of underground. Um, so, I mean, but there's a big stigma around it. Uh, so a lot of men will not identify that way.